whistle through the hole in a Lifesaver gummy? I don't eat gummies. Okay. Yeah. You know why I don't eat gummies? The incident of, of, of 1987. <laughs> the incident. You and me okay. that night where my dad had to pick me up and your mom what? had to pick you up because we were vomiting everywhere. And I yeah. had eaten a bunch of gummies that night. Cause, <laughs> so I have not had them yet. I just can't do it. <laughs> Hey, this is Deconversion Therapy, and this is your favorite, which is a letter sode, which is where you ding-dongs send us your your hilarious stories, and we idiots laugh at it. Um, <laughs> it brings us together, though. I am Karen. I'm Bonnie, and I love the term ding-dong. It's such, it just, because there's like a hard consonant, and then the ng at the end, it's very mm-hmm. fun. I don't know if it's an onomatopoeia, but I think it is um, another word and that means, I enjoy. It, <laughs> it means something else in England too. Like they, they'll go, "Oh, ding dong!" Like, "Ooh, woohoo!" Like, "Oh," uh, and which makes sense for "ding dong," the witch is dead. Like, so I love the witch is dead. I'm gonna put all of it together. The ding-dong of the doorbell, the ding-dong of an idiot, and the ding-dong, yay. And just so I can say it more. (laughs) Ding-dong. I'm excited. (laughs) You have to say it with a British accent. Ding-dong. Ding-dong. I think I just made that up. That's Australian. That's, uh, man. (laughs) Anywho, it's just foreigners. Yeah. They all look alike. Um, All right. We're just having fun. We usually talk about 30 minutes to an hour before we get to you. Uh, Very important things. Bonnie has told me that you can whistle through a Lifesaver gummy. uh, And then, you know, we catch up on things. Um, Yeah. But I want to say... Thank you to two different people. One is myself. No. One <laughs> is one is the person who suggested we open a Venmo account for I what? for I gotta stop. Y'all, I edit this podcast and I just realize <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit out. Bonnie just lifted a candle to her face and sniffed it. And I'm like, Why now do you have I've got to edit gotta, that out. Because I'm just going to have a <laughs> in the middle. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to picture you sniffing a candle. I'm sorry. Uh, it smells no, I'm so leaving, good. No, I'm leaving it in. Um, sorry. Let's get to this sniff episode. Listen, if people are embarrassing themselves for us, we can do it for them. Yeah. But the two people okay. I want to thank is one person who said, could you open like a Venmo if we don't want to be regular sponsors, which why we, I love our sponsors because we get together. It's just a small And we get to group. meet them. Yeah. They get yeah. to talk. We get to listen. I like it. Um, but we opened a Venmo for people who want to like sponsor a show or just throw in some stuff when they want. So I just want to thank that person for just suggesting it. And this week I'd like to thank Tracy for sponsoring this episode. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Because there yeah. are stupid things that I never thought would be costs of doing this, like hosting it and just <laughs> software things. Right. And, you know, you know your Afrin, your candle for sniffing. Okay, um, no. There's a lot of things. <laughs> And that was a birthday <laughs> gift, which which is really weird. So it's this really nice candle. And you know how they'll have something in English and then underneath it'll be a different no. language sometimes? I don't. Yeah. I don't go with so, the foreigners, I've said. Like on, you know, shampoo. Like yeah. a lot of it'll be shampoo, English, and then underneath shampooing. I'm like, I don't know what language <laughs> that is. Or like, make it a gerund. But this says scented candle. And then under it, it says bougie parfumé like oh. what 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 is bougie so are we calling is the word candle bougie in i French? think it's calling you bougie no i don't know i don't know um i don't have anyway, fancy so. candles like that 
I it's a still real have, fancy candle. It was a gift. I have at the <laughs> corner of my desk the Illuminatals candle yeah. of Tina Fey looking like Jesus. That's what I have. Yeah, my candles pretty much come from, you know, like Tuesday morning. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, we're candled out in the U.S. Yes. Yeah. Just so many fucking candles. Um, But I like them, too. Yeah, well, they're not all bougie. Um, So should I get into a letter? Let's, Let's get into the letters. Okay. So... This person, I'll start at the bottom, which is a good way to start. It says, yes, to use the first name. Okay, so this is from Alex. My story. Hi, Bonnie and Karen. I recently discovered your podcast via TikTok. Hey, there's some grassroots research for you. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And I've been loving it. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to share a silly, embarrassing story you might find amusing. I was raised as an evangelical Christian, here we go, Mm -hmm. and attended religious elementary school, which Uh we know about. As you probably can guess, the science education I received (laughs) at that school was questionable. (laughs) One of the facts we learned about human biology was that since God created Eve from Adam's rib, men have one less rib than women. (laughs) Absolutely. <laughs> I was so excited Thought to read this to you. for way too long. What a uh, cool fact. I went on to leave Christianity and the church behind, and I never really thought about that factoid one way or the other. Fast forward a few years later, I was taking some biology and human anatomy <laughs> classes at my secular college. When learning about the skeletal system in the rib cage, I confidently raised my hand. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hey, uh, announcement, wait. dear dear Christian wait. educated people, <laughs> never raise your hand, ever. No, oh, that's, that's, that's actually a good plan. I confidently raised my hand and asked the instructor, so which rib is the one that is missing in males? <laughs> that's so, that's so that's great. So oh, my cringy. God. The instructor gave me a look of pure confusion, and I suddenly (laughs) realized that I had made an error. I tried to play it off as a joke or something, I think. (laughs) I was so embarrassed that I left the classroom shortly after to mentally scream. Needless to say, I realized at that point that I still had some unlearning to do. I appreciate having this podcast to laugh along with as I continue that process. Thanks for so much. Wait, thanks so much for all you do, Alex. (laughs) <laughs> Poor Alex, I, we feel your you, pain. You t- <laughs> You've oh taken Karen's belief and it's, done everything is, the letter sods should do. It's a shame. <laughs> it's an embarrassment. I. It's amazing how much we're just like. You know, it's okay that that men don't all lean to the side because they're missing a rib. God filled that with his love or something. But that that made sense to us. Um, yeah. Lo siento, chicky. Okay. Poor person. Oh, I think God. we're done. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank sorry. you. All right. All right. Here's mine. Or not mine. This one is from Sarah. During college, I was involved in a non-denominational, in parentheses, so Baptist, sports ministry program. (laughs) Each summer, Each summer, I volunteered as a small group leader for the high school students coming to camp. This was an all-girls camp in the mountains of North Carolina. I should note that I had grown up Catholic. So, Mm. heathen? Okay, fine. (laughs) So, I always suspected at least half the staff was praying for my salvation. They prayed a lot at camp. That's true. I guess if a Catholic ever came to one of ours, they'd be like, oh my gosh, so much praying, so much singing. (laughs) So exhausting. (laughs) So much crying. Anyway, one (laughs) summer... I finally reached my limit of the solution to any issue is, quote, let's pray about it. And the solution to unexplainable negative things was 
praise Satan away on the first oh, evening of okay. camp. On the first evening of camp, we had a guest speaker come and, quote, share the gospel. They were wearing, okay, I've got to just say, I love how Sarah is putting common things that we don't even see as lingo in parentheses because they are lingo. Right. (laughs) Right. They were wearing a wireless microphone. This is important. And whenever they walked too close to the edge of the stage, a horrible sound would come out of the speakers. The camp staff quickly decided this was the work of Satan, trying to stop the gospel. Listen, I I have been through (laughs) so many of these situations in my life. Uh, in my Christian life that believed in things like this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The camp staff quickly decided, yeah, um, it was the work of Satan trying to stop the gospel. A group of staff went back to the auditorium to pray. Later that night, Oh, my God. More, they didn't more... just turn it off? <laughs> Bonnie, okay. you don't <laughs> understand the spiritual realm. Later that night, more prayer against Satan and the sound system. This kept going for another full day as the problem had oh yet God. to be resolved. It seemed to me that Satan was definitely getting too much credit for this problem. Surprise, surprise, <laughs> I was correct. After praying Satan away for over a day, the problem was identified. Turns out that Satan or the summer kid work in the sound booth, had not yeah. changed out the batteries on the wireless microphone transmitter, and oh as God. the batteries were dying, sound was getting quieter. <laughs> this solution was to turn up the gain, thus causing the feedback. Yes, for over 24 hours, no one seemed to think, we should check the batteries before we just go and blame Satan. Satan. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure Satan was still blamed for the whole thing. Seemed a bit unfair, and I certainly became more skeptical. Skeptical? I think yeah. Satan made me say that. Became more <laughs> skeptical of the logical problem solving of my Baptist friends. Hey, <sighs> it is. So we had that so many times. Either God was doing something or Satan was doing something. This is after my my Southern Baptist years, everything. And I think I told you about some friends where I was like, hey, do you want to go to Denny's? And they're like, let me pray Let's about pray. it. <laughs> yeah. And they were the same ones that were like, <clears throat> we threw away my grandmother's old washing board because we feel demons could be attached. I'm like, why the fuck didn't you just pray over the washing board? Yeah. I uh, it's it's drama, y'all. That's what they like. Thank you, Sarah. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's see. This next person says it's okay to use their name. So this is from Abby. Hey y'all, I love the podcast. I'm slowly working my way through older episodes. Oh, that's where we're scared. <laughs> I know. We've I know. changed a we little bit. We apologize ahead of time. Yeah. I'm wondering if I used my favorite derogatory word that I didn't think was derogatory toward uh. a group of people. <laughs> anyway, it was in a movie. It's okay. Um, this is the story of the time my parents' church had an intervention during the youth mission trip. Longer ago than I would like to admit, I was in the middle of nowhere, Texas, on the middle <laughs> school mission trip. At the very least, I can't complain about what we were doing there since we were mainly helping with cleanup after a series of tornadoes. That is nice. Oh, okay. That is to nice. To me, that's like, that's what church missions should be. You yeah. Know? And you're not spending a lot of money flying and going to another country yeah. and disturbing their, you know, religious ecosystem. Yeah. Sure. Pick Clean up trash. Up. That's what the church <laughs> yeah. needs to do. Get Um, and take the trash out. Yeah. So, okay. Surprisingly enough, none of the destruction or deviation. Okay. That was her misspelling, but I'm going to go back. That was Satan. Okay. (laughs) Surprisingly enough, none of the destruction or dis. Fuck. 
Surprisingly enough, none of the destruction or devastation. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, none of the destruction. <laughs> What's wrong? wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> what word is it? Devastation. devastation. Okay. Surprisingly enough, none of the destruction or devastation we saw was the catalyst of our impromptu intervention. Breakfast was. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm sure like many youth trips, one of the staple breakfast foods were those mini boxes of cereal. And because middle school boys are the way they are, a group of them started carrying the tiny cereal bags with the sugar dust left in it around in their pockets (laughs) after breakfast. The Apple Jacks ones are the best. Are you familiar to the, with this? Yeah. Carrying the shoe. Okay. Oh, not carrying it. No. I'm not okay. I wasn't a loser. <laughs> no, I'm just eating it. <laughs> yeah. One of the chaperones from a weird family, when we were collecting supplies to send down for hurricane relief, the only thing they brought was a store bought cake with a slice missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called the used tea bag, uh, where people would be like, "Yes, let's let's give to missionaries," and like someone a long time ago was got a bunch of used tea bags. Like they should be thankful for anything. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll take that parenthesis out. One of the chaperones from a weird family noticed they decided the only thing these 12-year-old boys could be carrying around with them was cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) Instead of pulling the kids aside to speak with them or letting someone with actual authority know about their concerns, they decided to have a full-on jacuzzi moment (laughs) during the evening worship. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had to watch a group of prepubescent boys have to tearfully deny being part of a drug cartel, oh. <laughs> but it certainly <laughs> sticks with you. <laughs> That's just my lucky charms. Oh. oh, my God. They did eventually get it sorted out that no one on the mission trip was dealing cocaine, (laughs) but it still resulted in an extra sermon on the dangers of drugs, how Jesus doesn't like drugs, and we'll go to hell if we do drugs, because it makes God sad. Mm -hmm. And no, the weird-ass adult who started this whole mess never apologized for their false accusation. Of course they didn't. No. And it's like when you said weird family, we didn't even, uh, we all can picture one. It's just... Absolutely. I know who they're talking about. And I'm going to say names. So, no. They brought a cake with a slice out. Oh, my God. That's so (laughs) great. (laughs) Which means we do not like this flavor. Here you go. (laughs) But I love just the idea of teenage boys doing something they think will catch on. So, yeah, I guess it was 20 or 30 years. Oh, it's a long time. Anyway, um... We went on a trip to Atlanta, and we went to the underground. And the trend, I think I've spoken about at this time, I saw it on one young man, and I thought, that is weird. And then, Mm -hmm. again, another one, and then another one. And I'm like, it never picked up globally, like (laughs) ball caps where you leave the the official sticker. sticker on. Mm -hmm. This one didn't catch on. It was putting a quarter in your ear. So there was a young boy (laughs) with a quarter just sticking right there in his ear. And then there were a bunch of others. In the part where you hear shit? (laughs) It's it's almost like, you know, this is going to catch on as something. Much like the, the powder in a pack of... You know, the little cereals. We're just yeah. going to walk around. Yeah, I'm going to do that, too. Yeah, I'm going to do that, too. It makes no sense. We are sheep. We're sheep. We all deserve <laughs> They're trying. Die. You know, they're trying to make fetch happen. And they they made <laughs> black happen. Oh, indeed, this one's a little longer, but we appreciate it. Here's Kendra. 
I was raised in a very conservative, very dedicated Midwestern Christian household. After high school, I went to a Christian university with the goal of being a Christian therapist so that I could provide (laughs) biblical family counseling, unlike all those secular heathen counselors pushing their family-destroying agendas. Ah, this (laughs) family-destroying agendas like leave your abusive husband. You know the ones. (laughs) That was me. That was not Kendra. However, coming of age in the, quote, Jesus freak era, I quickly realized that my true calling was to smuggle Bibles into hostile countries. You know, because that is what you do when you're trying to be the most on fire Christian ever. You know what? I knew some people who worked with us in the mission field, this is Karen again, in Thailand, and that was their thing. They smuggled Bibles into China. They even went to places where Chinese people had never seen white Westerners. Okay, let's did, do it. Did they just have nothing else to read? What do they think? They think they don't Would, have a giant reading list that they have to get through before they're going to go to some random book? They, it's the truth. They're bringing the word, Bonnie. It's well, let the, me also the tell you. highest calling. <laughs> Wait, let me interject here, and I'm sorry, we'll get back to the letter, but whenever I go take my car in for something, mm-hmm. um, I sit at this one booth where they have a computer to do some work, and there's always a Bible there. And I'm like, oh, I got to remember to bring something good to stick in it next time, you know? I don't exactly. know what. Like a dollar. You're going to go... And went with a note on it saying, oh, good thing you opened this Bible. Here's a dollar. I don't know. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You need to, yeah, I'll give you one of our stickers. Oh, okay. And in order to prepare for this unique career path, I switched my major to missions. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a major. I, I know. That's a major. So even a semester You're learning how to pack your suitcase? I don't know. Anyway, here we go. (laughs) And signed up for an eight-week summer trip to Southeast Asia. Once there, me and three other students settled in at our mission site. The pastor informed us that we would be working in the local high schools. The problem was that the schools wouldn't allow us access to the students to talk about Jesus. Thank God. That is a problem. (laughs) Yeah. We just talked about that with, um, if you guys haven't seen, there's a side, yet another tangent, with Woe Vicky, who is some white rapper who pretended she was black, got caught, then has been going into schools in Georgia without permission and talking to them after school about Jesus. Anyway, I contacted Freedom from Religion. Their lawyer sent a letter. Things are settled. Okay, moving on. Okay, so they wouldn't allow access to the students to talk about Jesus. So instead, the pastor had told the school's administrators that we were traveling internationally to educate students on the danger of drugs. I guess his plan for us was just to slip in a little Jesus whenever we could. Yes, this is <laughs> another tangent from Karen. That is exactly what missionaries do. They do not tell the truth. At this oh. point in the story, I must press upon you how ridiculously naive I still was. Although I was in college, I'd never kissed anyone. I could count the number of R-rated movies I'd seen on one hand, and I'd never even had a drink of alcohol, let alone experience with drugs. My total knowledge of drugs could be summed up in Mr. Mackey's catchphrase, Drugs are bad, MK." from South Park. (laughs) Hell, I even missed out on the anti-drug dare middle school program because I was homeschooled. Ah, you missed the good t-shirts. I reason it would be okay because surely the three other college students would know more or at least have some experience, right? No, unfortunately (laughs) not. The next day we found ourselves in the local internet cafe paying a few dollars per hour on a computer with a connection speed somehow slower than (laughs) dial-up. Searching phrases like, 
what types of drugs are there and oh, bad no. things <laughs> that drugs do. <laughs> I can relate to this so much. <laughs> We cobbled together what was probably one of the least informative (laughs) and least motivational presentations about drugs ever made, and then spent the following weeks repeatedly thrusting it upon unsuspecting high school students. At the start of every presentation, I was filled with dread that they would see us for the frauds that we were. Thankfully, they seemed more interested in learning about our lives in America than discussing the subject at hand. Absolutely. At the same time, they were perpetrating this monstrosity of a facade, we formed a friendship with a neighbor lady who tried to teach us the local language and who graciously, and unbeknownst to us, slaughtered the family's pet pig to serve us dinner as honored guests. (laughs) This has happened. I can relate. (laughs) Side note. It is very hard to eat when a young child at the table is sniffling from the too recent loss of her animal friend who is currently placed on a large serving dish in front of you. It is. Oh, my God. The neighbor lady had heard about the good work we'd been doing at the local schools and booked us to give the same presentation at the next parent-teacher association meeting, which she led... (laughs) As the local Mm -hmm. chapter president. As requested, we gave our whole spiel to the group of parents and teachers. However, this time when we finished, there was thick tension in the air. Something was (laughs) definitely going wrong. The neighbor lady proceeded to get up, thank us for the talk, and then provide some clarifying information. (laughs) See... Drugs in America were a little different from the drugs in their country, particularly marijuana. She explained that marijuana in their country wasn't that dangerous and had excellent medical uses, as it does here now. In fact, as many in the group knew, she grew large amounts of it herself. (laughs) Oh, shit, they called her out. The American college students just didn't know it was less dangerous here, so we provided poor information. I was gobsmacked. Were their drugs really different than those in the U.S.? I had no idea. Even more embarrassing is the fact that we had spent hours in her house and yard and didn't recognize the weed plants she was (laughs) cultivating. All the while, we were, quote, educating the local teens about the dangers of the good old Mary Jane. I could not have been happier to return home at the end of the summer. Yeah. Do not worry. I was relieved of my savior complex shortly after that trip when I was not so politely asked to leave the missions program for having <laughs> opinions while being female. Oh. <laughs> for Since having then, opinions. Oh, exactly. Since then, I've had the opportunity for <clears throat> some personal experiences with a few substances. And a strange turn of events, I am currently working professionally in the field of substance use research. Wow. That's Maybe it's just the universe's way of evening out all the moronic things I must have said that summer. <laughs> Thank you wow. so much for that. Ah, oh, Kendra, believe me, <laughs> um, we're all doing penance in one way or another. <sighs> Uh, I can relate to just being totally ignorant of all of it, Mm -hmm. not knowing which one you smoked, not knowing which one you shot up, like clueless, absolutely clueless. The other thing that I keep going back to is I would love to know if any of the people receiving your presentation remembered that. (laughs) <laughs> and what their real reaction was, you know, I years know. later. Exactly. You remember that like, weird woman 
<laughs> and the thing is, like the whole thing of slaughtering an animal for you oh, and all God. that. I mean, that's yeah. uh, Kendra knows. That's one thing. I detested about missions is how we like totally used up the local resources because they were so yeah. enamored with our quote whiteness or westerness. Uh, mm -hmm. It breaks my heart. I'm <laughs> telling you, I need to go smoke something to get that out of my system. <laughs> Well, I guess you're not going to be having a gummy. And on that uh, note, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Don't be a shit pile by uh, doing anything to other people. That's it. That's all I'm saying. And goodbye. Yeah. All right, bye.